Erev Tov, Chavri Yimayim, Stephen Benun, you're watching Israeli News Live, Russia also, spokesman there, Maria Zakharova for the Foreign Ministry, has noted as well that the potential of political, excuse me, of uh, actual military force on North Korea with the United States is a very real possibility. TASS Russian News Agency is reporting in an article today, situation around North Korea coming close to a potential use of force, Russian diplomat. Of course, they are quoting Maria Zakharova, as you see pictured here on your screen and behind me. Uh, and it says, she says here, how far the situation has gone? Well, it is uh, come very close to a potential possibility of a forced conflict. She said in an interview with the Evening News Roundup on Russia One television channel uh, there in Russia. It's one of the Russia's main television channels there in the country. And, uh, of course, it, it has come very close to that. Pyongyang not heeding the warnings of President Trump uh, and some of the warnings that he has made there. Uh, he certainly has made it quite clear that uh, he is planning on using force there. Uh, and, of course, as we brought the article from the Washington Post out to you the other day, Beijing warns Pyongyang, you're on your own if you go after the United States. Well, that was kind of a vague response there in their title. If you really take a closer look at what, uh, uh, what China, what Beijing uh, is saying to uh, North Korea is this here. Uh, according to the article that was that they're quoting from, says Beijing, China won't come to North Korea's aid if it launches missiles threatening U.S. soil and there is retaliation. That's what a state-owned newspaper warned on Friday, but it would uh, intervene if Washington strikes first. The Global Times newspaper is not the official mouthpiece of the Communist Party, but in this case, its editorial probably does reflect government policy, experts said. Well, pretty much it does, because in a communist society such as China, you're not going to go around publishing and be in, in, in print very long if you're not staying in tune with the government. But what I noticed in this and we brought out yesterday is that their threat to abstain from the conflict and America's retaliation is if, uh, if North Korea were to uh, target U.S. soil. Now, that's kind of interesting. That also kind of leaves a door open that China would respond uh, if, in fact, U.S. retaliated, if it did not st strike U.S. soil, but rather another place in the region, such as U.S. military bases in Japan or uh, that of Guam. And that's what we're seeing right now. North Korea assembling an arsenal for a nuclear sneak attack, going in behind enemy lines there to attack the U.S. military base at Guam. This is what's come out on the Daily Beast. It says here, while President Trump is vowing to inflict fire and fury, Kim's regime is making steady progress on an undersea nuke that could evade missile defenses. North Korea has been steadily assembling all the technologies it needs to put a nuclear warhead on a submarine-launched missiles. Missile. If the if uh, the Pyongyang regime deploys an effective undersea nuke, and all signs point toward that eventuality, it might be able to sell a sub behind U.S. defenses on the Korean Peninsula and launch a surprise strike on North Korean cities. And of course, uh, another article uh, goes on to say too, Guam also being in that target rain 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 as well. When we get down here to August 8th, Pyongyang analysis, it was preparing a plan for a preemptive strike on the U.S. military base in the Pacific island of Guam. Responding to that threat, U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis warned North Korea to cease any consideration of actions that would lead to the end of its regime and the destruction of its people. These are the things that we're watching. This is what I'm saying. I'm very concerned about how this is going to play out. And of course, as we've also noted as well, uh, the biblical prophecy from Daniel 11, 44, where that king of the north, he's troubled by tidings out of the east and out of the west. And as we've stated as well, China, according to the Washington Post here, is going to intervene if the U.S. does a preemptive strike. And the U.S. nearly about would probably feel the necessity to do a preemptive strike because of a threat of a nuclear strike on the United States itself. That puts the U.S. in a very awkward situation. And of course, now they're threatening to impeach Trump if he goes overboard with force. Uh, they want to impeach him if he doesn't do enough. You know, there, there's all kinds of excuses out there just to impeach the president. Well, 
It's pretty crazy if you ask me. All these different issues here. What does the president do? It seems to me it's not so much President Trump, but more the deep state out there that's, uh, or the military industrial complex that wants this war. U.S. dollar on shaky grounds right now. In fact, President Putin has said before the U.S. is only uh, bringing money out of thin air. And he has advised many of his own allies to drop the dollar in buying uh, oil and use their own currency or other currencies such as the euro. So destabilization of the United States is definitely underway by different powers around the world. And that could follow suit if China follows suit along with Russia. That would also bring more destabilization. And of course, a global conflict, about the only way to distract the whole world from what's really going on. Now, let's move on. Uh, more news about the situation uh, that we're seeing here. Uh, uh, RT is reporting this is a pod over, uh, excuse me, zapped over Zapod. NATO double think on war games reaches a brain dead condition here. Next month, in about four, about four weeks, actually, the Zapod exercises, Russian exercises with Belarus, is to take place in the country of Belarus there, which is on NATO's doorstep. Can't see why NATO's really concerned as much there. According to Russia, there's 13,000 troops that will be involved in this. According to Western reports there, they're expecting hundreds of thousands will be involved. I kind of think that Russia probably has underestimated or underquoted the number of troops that would be involved, but just from the sheer number of train cars that they had uh, actually purchased to bring in military equipment back last year that we reported on that uh, as well, uh, it seemed to me there would be far more than 13,000 troops there. Now, whether or not it exceeds 100,000 or not is still really not known, but I just find it ironic that North Korea on the verge of a war Europe, very concerned about Russia's Zapad exercises, which is Ru the word Zapad is Russian, means West. Is this something that's going to escalate? And even as we speak right now, Donetsk and Luhansk, especially the Donetsk region, has come under a new round of attacks from Ukraine. That's over in Ukraine, the eastern province there that has... Uh, a breakaway re, uh, province there, breaking away from Ukraine itself, they are under a renewed attack. You cannot help but wonder, are we not about to head to a global war? According to some reports as well, China, of course, like I said, vowed to help North Korea if there, if there is a preemptive strike on this nation. Um, and it definitely looks like we are headed to global war. And another uh, interesting article that just came out on Medium.com. Meanwhile, the Arctic Russia's northern fleet gets an upgrade. They have sent the uh, S-300, S-400 systems up into the Arctic region. You know, this is just getting so odd. As I began to look at where forces are being strategically placed around the world, the North Pole... Is Russia that worried about someone coming over the North Pole there to attack the country? Well, they seem to be enough worried about it that they put an air defense system up in the North Pole. Of course, you do have the U.S. Marines up in uh, Norway on Russia's northern end. That gets pretty much up there before you run out of trees. No doubt this is one of the reasons why they have that system there. But it's just really becoming a completely unstable world. And of course, as I look at all this and how this is gearing up and um, the threat of war is certainly lurking on our doorsteps. A global conflict. Well, they wanted to depopulate the earth as we saw at the Georgia uh, Guidestones there, I guess guiding the way for the future to reduce the planet's population down to only 500 million people. I guess it'd take a global war just to do that. And of course, Russia and China, no doubt, waiting to see what happens with North Korea. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.